In a world where image and material possessions are everything, I think this video is important. This message is important. I am not the perfect booktuber. I'm just not. Hell, I've gone through years where I barely upload sometimes. I don't have the perfect booktube channel. The most subscribers, the most creative or original content. I'm just me. And me? I struggle with perfection. Or I guess I should say, I struggle with not being perfect. Not having the perfect channel, not being the perfect booktuber. I also struggle with my image on this platform. Who am I here on booktube? Who do I want to be on booktube? What types of videos do I want to make? I'm known for my book hauls and now my Zenith video. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. But what am I truly trying to say on here? What's my, what's my message? What's my goal? What am I trying to say that hasn't been said in a million different ways by what seems like a million other booktubers. This community has really grown. I mean, we've exploded and now there's so many of us and you all are doing amazing, amazing things. You're so creative and so original and sometimes I feel that I have nothing new or special to bring to the table. So as I get older, I realize that we'll always ask ourselves these questions. About life, I mean, not necessarily about booktube. Who am I? Who do I want to be? These questions are not exclusive to booktube after all. These are just life questions. We will always ponder our existence and how we exist. How we choose to be seen by the world. That never stops. With each new age reached, each new season of life, each new chapter, these two questions never go away. We never figure it out. We only pretend to. We only portray to. But introspection is good, right? Self-awareness is very good. So what does this have to do with me being addicted to buying books? I'm glad you asked. Well, first of all, that's not even entirely true anymore anyway. It's just a catchier and more attention-grabbing title than, say, I don't buy as many books anymore, but I still do, but not like before, because realizing things? No, that just would not have made you intrigued enough to click on this video. I know, I know, clickbait. I'm guilty. So yes, I still do buy books. Mostly ebooks. I mean, my current favorite genre at the moment is new adult and urban fiction. Ugh, hate that. Ooh, hate that title. Also, African American fiction, African lit, black lit, whatever you want to call it. I'm loving all of it right now, and I still do pre order books. And yeah, I'm still the girl that just can't resist a good book sale. I'm just not addicted anymore, and I'm not binge buying anymore. I just woke up to the fact that you can indeed have too many books. It is possible. This is a real thing. The thought of not being able to read all of the books that I own in my lifetime, given the fact that we also don't know how long we will live and each day is a gift and we are never promised tomorrow, I mean, it's just truly sad. It concerns me. It worries me that I'm not going to get to them all. That, ladies and gentlemen, is owning too many books when you start having those thoughts. And that's sad. <sighs> also, I'm a mood reader. I'm also a mood book buyer. I'm also easily influenced by other people and their book recommendations, and I kind of can fall into their book buying habits or patterns. That's why I don't really watch booktube videos anymore. I'm just too weak. <laughs> It always made me buy more books, books I don't even necessarily need. The problem with that is that I buy the book while I'm in the mood and then I fall out of the mood to read the book before I get to the book. Oh my gosh, it's a crazy cycle and it needed to stop. And then most likely what happens is after I fall out of the mood to read that book, after I've already bought that book, it just sits on my shelf for who knows how long until I get back into the mood to read that book or even remember that I have that book because I do that a lot, or I used to. I used to buy books all the time and not really remember 
that I bought them. Okay, I still kind of do that, but oh, it used to be way worse. I was terrible. I also woke up to the fact that I was binge buying books. Well, that in itself is bad, but I was binge buying books for all the wrong reasons. I was doing it for the look of it all. Yes, I'm a sucker for a gorgeous edition of a book, but more than that, I was building a bookstagrammer worthy library. That Tumblr worthy bookshelf collection. That booktube bookshelf tour worthy collection. It's all an image really, a superficial one. There is nothing wrong with loving beautiful things and beautiful books as long as you're doing it all for you. I began to realize that my obsession with buying hundreds of books a year was truly unhealthy because I wasn't doing it for myself. I was doing it for others, for the look of it all. I was doing it so others would think well of me, would envy me, would equate my perfect book collection to my life, and therefore to deduce that I have it all together. I don't. It was a problem and one that I eventually said to myself, this stops now. Also, I woke up to how much freaking money I was spending. Like, what the fuck? Okay, money don't grow on trees, as my mom and daddy like to say all the time. And I was treating it like it was. And you know, these days, I just value a healthy savings account versus a healthy book collection. Hashtag adulting. Hashtag growth. Hashtag I'm moving and I would like to make better financial decisions. <sighs> uh, it's necessary. No, but for real. I also woke up to the fact that collecting books at such an astronomical and senseless rate really just brought me no true, actual, genuine satisfaction at all. I was doing it once again for the look of it all, for the look of having this amazing and vast library collection. I realized that while I still do enjoy being a collector and I consider myself to be a book collector, I would still like to have a collection that I believe that I can read in this lifetime. You know, a reasonable collection of books, not an astronomical one. I woke up to how much anxiety it gave me owning so many things. Like seriously, I couldn't breathe some nights. I felt like the walls were closing in on me and I was just surrounded by stuff. So many books, so many things, so much clutter. I couldn't breathe so much stuff. Then there was the existential crisis. Material possessions were beginning to mean way too much to me. Way too much. I was becoming materialistic. Yes, I love pretty things, but it was consuming me. I was trying to fool myself into thinking it wasn't that bad, that I wasn't as bad as other people who collect frivolous things because I'm collecting books, knowledge, words, adventure, stories, dreams. However I wanted to paint it, I was definitely in denial. But my logical brain did win out. I mean, it's not rocket science and materialism is materialism no matter how you want to paint it. It's no different really. You can't take it with you and eventually it will begin to weigh you down. I woke up, y'all. I am all the way woke. I am awake. Whoa, oh, 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 oak. Oh. And don't get me wrong, I am not here to make anybody feel bad about their book buying habits or their buying habits in general. I am not policing your pockets. I am not judging you. I actually don't really care. Today, I'm just here to share my story. Maybe by sharing my story, I can cause some of you to think and look a little bit deeper into why you do the things that you do and why you buy the things that you buy. And I just so happen to be talking about books here. Looking a little bit deeper into your own habits. That's all. I still love things. I still love beautiful things. I still love shopping. And yes, I still love building my book collection. I still believe in retail therapy. I still love book hauls and taking advantage of book sales and promotions and coupons. I am a collector. That's just who I am. My closet is bursting with beautiful shoes of ugh, numerous amounts. 
beautiful clothing. I have more watches than the average person and more skincare products than anyone could possibly need. Like, ever. I love candles and soaps and I love wearing a different perfume fragrance or essential oil fragrance every single day. But now, I know why I do the things that I do and why I buy the things that I buy and the quantities I buy them in. Now, I check myself. Now, I shop sales. I only buy things that I am absolutely in love with and feel in that moment that I cannot leave the store without or cannot live without. I shop primarily in thrift shops and buy things secondhand or cheap or on sale and I no longer binge shop or binge collect. I buy with intention. I check myself. But when I do slip up, or have a bad day or comfort myself with retail therapy, I give myself grace. I forgive myself. I'm kind to myself because now I do it all for me and nobody else. Now, even when I do slip back into old habits, my intentions are different. My reasons are different. Now it's all for the love of me. It's for the care of myself and it's not for anybody else. I'm not trying to impress anyone. I'm not trying to portray any type of image or facade, make anyone jealous, make anyone wish they or covet my life. It is for no one but me, for my own happiness, sanity, satisfaction, pleasure, and joy. It's all for me now. Hello, my name is Oshale, and I used to be addicted to buying books. I used to be addicted to things. What's your story? Fear of others looking at you and finding you lacking, finding you not good enough, finding you less than, you know, someone else. That fear of not fitting in to the community, that fear of not being able to be as successful as those that perhaps you watch and admire and, you know, perhaps 